big revelation in Jerusalem, the third temple unveiling. Ladies and gentlemen, buckle up because we've got a massive bombshell dropping straight from Netanyahu's desk. The word on the street is that the reconstruction of the third temple is set to kick off this November. Can you feel the anticipation building? Now, this isn't your everyday news. We're talking about a historical game changer that's got the world buzzing. But before we dive into the juicy details, let's get a quick history lesson on what this third temple hullabaloo is all about. You see, way back when, Jerusalem had two temples, but they were down for the count ages ago. One fell during a scuffle with the Babylonians in 587 BCE, and the other bit the dust in a tussle with the Romans in 70 CE. Now, picture this, the Third Temple, a hot topic in Judaism, especially for the Orthodox folks. It's not just another brick and mortar project, it's a sacred dream etched deep in the fabric of their beliefs. According to the Hebrew Bible, the prophets dropped a hint that this Third Temple should grace Jerusalem before or during the Messianic Age, a sort of spiritual touchdown in the future. Hold on, though. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. We've got a plot twist in the form of a little building called the Dome of the Rock, already chilling at the same spot. This architectural wonder is a big deal for the Muslim community and, as you can imagine, has stirred up some spicy disagreements between our Jewish and Muslim friends. Now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel. I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. Subscribe and also click that notification bell, so you won't miss any of the next videos that are uploaded every day. Alright, let's keep rolling. Now, the quarrel over this prime real estate has spilled over into the heavyweight arena of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, turning it into a headline-grabbing political saga. The international community is keeping its distance, unsure who gets the keys to Jerusalem because, hey, both Israel and the Palestinian National Authority want to call it their capital. But here's the kicker, the attempts to rebuild this temple go way back. Since the Romans threw a party by wrecking the second temple in 70 CE, religious Jews have been itching to have a go at temple construction on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. It's not just a wish. It's a tradition deeply rooted in Jewish beliefs, with prayers for its revival being a regular jam in Jewish worship sessions. Fast forward through history, and we've got emperors allowing it, revolts trying it, rabbis rejecting it, and even earthquakes throwing a wrench into the mix. The plot thickens with Roman punishments, Byzantine garbage dumps, Mongol raids, and Arabs taking charge but kicking out the builders. It's like a historical soap opera with divine interventions, prayers, clashes, and even garbage disposal drama. Now, let's zoom in on the recent chapters, post-1967, after Israel took control of the Temple Mount. Rabbi Skomo Gorin, the chief rabbi of the IDF, threw caution to the wind, challenging norms and leading Jews in prayer despite some resistance from the Muslim guardians of the site talk about shaking things up. Navigating the maze, the complex journey to rebuilding the third temple. All right, folks, we've just scratched the surface and the plot thickens as we unravel the saga of rebuilding the third temple. So let's dive into the twists and turns of this roller coaster, shall we? Now we left off with Rabbi Skomo Gorin stirring the pot advocating for a synagogue on the Temple Mount and boldly supporting the idea of the Third Temple. The guy even claimed to have seen the Ark of the Covenant in 1983, talk about spice. But, of course, the road to Temple Mount hasn't been a smooth ride. The chief rabbis Unman and Nim join the party, reinforcing laws to keep Jewish access at bay, creating a bit of a showdown. Goran, undeterred, persisted in pushing for that third temple, even in the face of prohibitions on Temple Mount entry, affirmed as recently as 2005. However, in 2014, 
a whopping 400 Jews decided to break the rules and prayed there, showcasing the ongoing tension and the obstacles in the way of rebuilding Temple Mount. Now, here's where it gets juicy. Picture this, two ancient Islamic heavyweights, the ALAXA Mosque and the Dome of the Rock, standing tall on the Temple Mount. Any attempt to mess with these guys could set off some serious international fireworks, thanks to the deep Muslim association with these holy places. And let's not forget the ongoing debates about the precise location of the Second Temple. While the Dome of the Rock claims dibs on the original spot, some scholars are throwing alternative locations into the mix, turning this into a historical treasure hunt. Oh, and did I mention the Orthodox Jewish scholars playing it cool, waiting for the Messiah before they pick up the construction tools? But hold your horses, we're not done. Cubit measurements, those ancient building blocks, add another layer of complexity. The Talmud spills the tea that the Second Temple was only possible with direct prophetic guidance, and without that magical touch, rebuilding remains a challenge. Despite all these hurdles, various groups are putting on their construction hats, emphasizing the benefits of development around the Temple Mount. They're pulling out the historical card, talking about King Agrippa's time when millions flocked to Jerusalem. The pitch here is that spiritual tourism could be the golden ticket to economic growth, benefiting local and regional communities that could use a boost. Now, let's zoom in on the sticky situation involving Jewish access to the Holy of Holies. Halakha, the Jewish religious law, is playing referee here, with many rabbis waving the red flag, prohibiting Jews from stepping into the sacred complex. It's like trying to dance through a field of landmines, folks. And then there's the delicate balance of power. Muslim clerics control the Dome of the Rock and ALAXA Mosque, while Israeli police handle security. This combo has sparked historical incidents, like the 90 riot fueled by rumors of temple rebuilding, or the 96 tunnel opening that set off riots and a visit from Ariel Sharon. Now, here's the bombshell. What does Netanyahu have to say about all this? In a surprising revelation, an investigation by Heretz spills the beans on Israel's deputy defense minister and a key U.S. donor supporting initiatives to reclaim Jewish control over the temple. Yep, you heard it right. Despite Israel officially playing it cool, it seems there's some undercover support for temple dreams. But let's not get ahead of ourselves there's still more to uncover in this temple reconstruction thriller. So, buckle up, grab your detective hats, and let's move on to the next chapter, where we'll unravel the mystery of the temple's location and the anticipation tied to the city of David. Stick with me, folks, it's about to get even more intriguing. Unveiling the Mysteries, the Third Temple, Prophecy, and Divine Presence. Welcome back. Dear listeners, as we delve deeper into the enigmatic world of the Third Temple, Biblical prophecies, and the Divine Presence that captivates believers across the globe. This journey is nothing short of a roller coaster ride, so buckle up and get ready for the twists and turns. Now, we left off with the Third Temple making its grand entrance onto the stage of prophecy. Some have dubbed it a kiss from heaven a symbol of hope after the first and second temples faced destruction. For Christians, this moment is monumental, a day they've long awaited, anticipating the return of the Temple of God. But let me tell you, the road to the sacred symbol's reconstruction is no walk in the park. The epicenter of the saga is Jerusalem, where the construction of the third temple holds immense significance in biblical prophecy. It's not just about bricks and mortar, it's about the return of Jesus Christ to earth and the continuation of the sacred Jewish tradition. However, the path to completion is riddled with political and religious tensions, all thanks to the sensitive location, the Dome of the Rock, a holy site cherished by Muslims. But hold on to your hats, folks, because after a long wait, there are finally signs that the construction of the Third Temple might kick off. 
Excitement is in the air, and people are ready to witness the return of this sacred symbol. But, as with any good plot, stranger events are about to unfold, throwing everyone for a loop. Picture this, the Ark of the Covenant, that legendary relic of religious significance. For believers, the temple is more than just a structure, it symbolizes God's presence among his people through the Ark, housed within the temple. It's where God revealed himself countless times, a symbol of national security and divine protection. In biblical terms, the temple's importance is echoed when the temple in heaven is open and the Ark of the Covenant is revealed within. Thunder, lightning, earthquakes, the whole divine spectacle. The Ark, which vanished during the exile, holds immense significance, signifying God's continued presence and protection for his people. Just as wars and earthly calamities couldn't destroy the Ark's significance, believers find solace in knowing that no earthly power can rob them of the presence and protection of their Lord. Now, let's talk Antichrist, the mysterious figure associated with the rebuilding of the Third Temple. It's like a biblical blockbuster, folks. According to prophecy in 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 4 to 12, the Third Temple will indeed rise, but with a twist. It becomes a place of worship for the Antichrist, adding a layer of intrigue to the narrative. For over 2,000 years, a spiritual tug of war has been playing out, God's program of world evangelism versus the devil's scheme to place his man on the world's throne. We believe the Holy Spirit acts as the restrainer, holding back the devil's grand plan. As long as God's will is to continue saving souls and building churches, the devil's program hits a roadblock. But here's the kicker. The Antichrist's appearance comes with a side of satanic deception and strong delusion as a judgment for those who reject the truth. It's a spiritual chess game, and those waiting for signs before hopping on the salvation train might find themselves in a tricky checkmate. Miracles and wonders become the Antichrist's arsenal, blinding those who reject the truth. His grand entrance will be adorned with charisma, charm, and the promise of solutions to age-old problems. But make no mistake, it's a facade. After three and a half years, his true nature emerges, unleashing the Great Tribulation, the greatest time of trouble the world has ever seen. But here's the catch, God doesn't really want a temple. Surprising, right? In Isaiah 66 verses 1 to 2, God makes it clear that he's not after bricks and mortar, he wants obedience and righteousness. It's a wake-up call for those who believe building a temple is the ultimate goal. God desires a spiritual connection, not just a physical structure. So, as we navigate this labyrinth of prophecy, divine presence, and the Antichrist's ominous role, let's keep our minds open and our hearts tuned in. The Unveiling Truth beyond temples and mysteries. Welcome back, my friends, as we embark on the final leg of our journey into the realm of ancient prophecies, temples, and the timeless quest for divine connection. It's been a wild ride, and we've barely scratched the surface. So, buckle up and let's dive into the last chapter. Now, we concluded our previous discussion with the disciples preaching far and wide confirming their words with signs. But here's the kicker, it's not about physical temples. God's got a bigger plan, and it involves a spiritual temple. Picture this, a temple not built by human hands, but residing in the hearts of those who believe in God, a temple where hope and worship flourish. God isn't into hastily reconstructed temples, he's into hearts ablaze with his presence. In the past, temples were crafted with sweat and sacrifice, and God's presence dwelled within. But after the sacrifice of Christ, the temple shifted. It's now within us, a spiritual dwelling not constructed with hands. The disciples' mission? To preach the gospel everywhere, from marketplaces to places of worship, and even in the cozy corners of believers' homes. Let's get one thing straight. Christ is the temple, and we, the believers, 
are the embodiment of God's sacred space. As Paul wisely put it, do you not know that you are the temple of God? It's not about bricks and mortar, but about the collective spirit of believers, joined together as the church. The temple in Jerusalem, a sacred building, finds its counterpart in the church, the dwelling place of God's presence. From the wilderness tabernacle to Solomon's temple, God desired to dwell among his people. In the New Testament, a paradigm shift occurs. Jesus, the living incarnation of the eternal Word of God, becomes the new earthly temple. His presence, the guiding force, resonates with the name Emmanuel, God with us. Fast forward to today, and the church takes center stage. Ephesians 2 tells us that believers are being built together as a dwelling where God lives by His Spirit. Our Spirit, the Holy of Holies, is where God resides. Just as the Old Covenant Temple had three courts, we, the body of Christ, have our body, soul, and spirit. Your spirit, my friends, is the VIP section where God sets up shop. But hold on, there's drama in the outer courts. Jesus, walking by the temple in Jerusalem, spots merchants and traders turning his father's house into a marketplace. He's not having it. With the whip in hand, Jesus clears them out. Defilement in the outer court, yet the Holy of Holies remains untarnished. A powerful reminder that even in the temple of God, there can be defilement. Let's fast forward to the late 1960s, where an organization called the Temple Mount Faithful steps onto the scene. Led by Gerson Salomon, a military officer with a miraculous backstory, their mission is clear, rebuild the temple. But wait, there's a rival in town, the Temple Institute, armed with plans, articles, and even a $2 million gold menorah. Both groups have a Christian fan base eagerly awaiting the temple's return. The interview with a reformed Jewish rabbi sheds light on the Messiah's arrival. He'll come when things look dark, bringing eternal peace. The temple, a symbol of that peace, awaits its rebuilding. But, there's a twist, things need to get darker before the light shines through. Elijah will make an entrance, announcing the Messiah's arrival, who will proclaim the time for the third temple. Efforts for rebuilding have been ongoing. The Temple Mount Faithful parades stones through Jerusalem, while the Temple Institute invests over $20 million in priestly garments, sacred instruments, and a full-scale model of the temple. The desire for a physical temple remains strong, fueled by the hope of a Messiah who brings peace, helps rebuild, and allows the continuation of traditions. Yet, here's the paradox, God is everywhere. Realizing this truth doesn't require temples, but for some, the physical structure is a reminder of God's omnipresence. Temples, religion, and rituals aren't the essence, they're just guides on the path to spiritual awakening. As we navigate the complex web of beliefs, traditions, and the divine quest, let's keep our hearts open to the deeper truth. God's will, though challenging, unfolds smoothly when the time is right. The third temple, when built, will honor God, but the ultimate temple is within us, in every molecule, every soul, everywhere. So, my friends, as we conclude this epic exploration, let's remember that our spiritual journey surpasses any physical structure. The mystery lies not just in temples, but in the understanding that God is in everything. With this newfound wisdom, we can face challenges knowing that, in God's time, everything will align smoothly. Until then, keep the faith, stay curious, and may your journey be filled with light and revelation. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.